So how is everyone doing today? You guys great? Okay, good. So uh, my name is Nicole. I am from Hamilton, Montana. Uh, raise your hand if you guys know where Montana's at. Cool, okay, most of you there. So it was a bit of a flight for me down here. Um, but I am a wildlife biologist and a, a conservation educator. And I do want to talk to you guys today about what it's like to work on a wildlife refuge. So to start, though, I do want to give you guys a little bit of background on myself and how I got into this field. So this picture up here on the board, this is the Black Hills of South Dakota. That's actually where I grew up, and my passion for conservation began here. Um, I spent most of my childhood camping and hiking and also, I did a lot of fishing. I love ice fishing, fly fishing. Um, I'm also a hunter. So when I got into college, I really started to hunt. I do big game hunting, and I also do some waterfowl hunting now, too. And like you guys heard Ryan Brock talking out there, hunting is a big part of conservation. And that's why I'm a hunter, because I do think it's a wonderful management strategy for wildlife. But I have always loved wildlife. As I grew up, I was always in the outdoors. Any chance I got, I was spending my time outside. And I knew that in my future, I wanted to work with wildlife. I wanted to teach people about it because I want other people to be as passionate as I am about wildlife. So with all of this in mind, I actually uh, found out that there was a college in Montana called the University of Montana. And there, I got a degree in wildlife biology. I also got a minor in nonprofit administration because nonprofits like the Wild Sheep Foundation, the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, are all really important in conservation. And I wanted to be able to work at organizations like that. And then lastly, I also got a certificate in global leadership because I want to be able to teach as many people about conservation and wildlife as possible. So all of my experiences, though, as a kid, led me to wanting to do this as a full-time career. My passion, I wanted to turn into my job. So next here, whoops. So yep, there's me with my degree. Um, so leading up to this though, so before college and going into college, I worked a lot of different jobs in the field of wildlife and conservation. So I actually started out working as a cave tour guide uh, in high school. So I worked in a cave 10 hours a day and I would lead people on tours, just teaching them about the natural world and history. I always wanted to work with wildlife, but this is where, where my passion for working with people actually began. And I was like, hey, I can actually teach people about this. And then after that, I started working at a reptile zoo in South Dakota. So I actually spent two summers where I would hold snakes for people and teach them about them, make people care about them. Because snakes, I, raise your hand if you guys are scared of snakes out there, you don't like them. Uh, definitely a few of you out there. But my job was to teach people that, you know, snakes aren't that bad. There's definitely dangerous ones out there. But I would stand there and show people these animals. And also for questions, we'll wait till the end, but we'll, I'll have plenty of time for you guys. Also a fun part about that job is I worked with giant tortoises. So I had tortoises that were 300 pounds. So huge tortoises and I got to let people walk up to these animals and touch them. And I loved that because I wanted to work with wildlife. So this job gave me that chance to be hands on with wildlife, but also teach people about them, make them care about it as much as I did. So after working at this reptile zoo, in college, I started working at the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. So they're just like the Wild Sheep Foundation here, except they focus on elk. They are very passionate about that. And there, I was also an educator, so I got to teach people about elk. And this is when I was really figuring out that I wanted to work with people and teach them about this wildlife. And then last, all these pictures you see up on the board, I actually was a zookeeper for a bit, and I worked in North Dakota at a zoo with over 128 different species of animals. And this really solidified the fact that I still wanted to work with wildlife. So on the board, you can see I worked with grizzly bears, I worked with otters, I also got to work with tigers and camels and stuff like that. And it was great because not only was I training these animals, I was also, as you can see in that bottom picture, teaching people them about them as well. So all of these jobs, though, finally led me to getting a job at the Teller Wildlife Refuge in Hamilton, Montana, after I graduated from college. And this job is really what I'm passionate about and what I've always wanted to do with my life. So moving on here, 
I want to tell you guys a little bit about the Teller Wildlife Refuge and what it's like to work at a wildlife refuge. I'm going to grab some water real quick. So there are a lot of misconceptions with wildlife refuge. I hear it all the time. We actually have people show up to our door with sick and injured animals. We are not a rehabilitation facility, so if you ever see um, injured wildlife on the road or such like that, don't take them to wildlife refuges. We do care for animals, like we're trying to protect animals, but we aren't re rehabilitating them to put them in the wild. We are protecting the habitat that animals require to live with. So. The Teller Wildlife Refuge is actually pretty special. Raise your guys' hand if you've ever been on a wildlife refuge before. Okay, a few of you out there. So most wildlife refuges are run by the government. This wildlife refuge is a nonprofit. So just like uh, the Wild Sheep Foundation, we aren't getting money from the government to run our facility. We actually get it all from donations from conservationists, like hunters, anglers, and just people that like care about wildlife. Like We have a lot of birders out there that just like to go watch birds, and they donate money to us to protect these species. So the mission of our wildlife refuge is to inspire, educate, and demonstrate conservation in action. My job at the refuge um, encompasses that mission completely. I am responsible for making that mission happen on the wildlife refuge. So more facts about this wildlife refuge. It's not very old. It was started in 1989 by a gentleman named Otto Teller. It was his ranch and he saw down in Montana that so many people are moving into Montana and the habitat's getting broken up. So he decided to put a conservation easement on this piece of land and donate it and turn it into a wildlife refuge to protect it for the future. So moving on here. So on our refuge, it is 1,300 acres, and it is home to a lot of wildlife. So it's home to animals such as moose, elk, deer. We even have ducks, swans. There are muskrat. Muskrat look a lot like beavers if you've never seen one before, except they don't have the big tail behind them. Um, there's also a lot of like hawks, falcons, owls on this refuge, and there's really so much more. Even down to the insects we have, they're all important to this refuge. So, we'll move on from that. So next, this refuge is really important also because it contains a lot of habitats. And habitats are really, really important to the wildlife we have on this refuge. And like I said, our mission is to protect this habitat for the wildlife there. Because without the habitat, we wouldn't have all these awesome animals that we see on the refuge today. So in the background, that's actually a picture of the refuge there. And you'll notice that we do have some agriculture fields. It goes back into some trees. We also, there's mountains in the background, so the refuge doesn't quite go to the mountains, but it's kind of in this flat river riparian corridor. So we have ponderosa pine forests. We also have cottonwood and aspen stands. There are agriculture fields. And you might think that's weird. You're like, an agriculture field on a wildlife refuge. Like, what is that all about? So it's actually really important for wildlife. We have a wildlife-friendly agriculture program. So every year we plant things like barley, corn, um, alfalfa, and kind of hay products. And we leave 50% of that standing in the wintertime for wildlife. Because in the valley, or all around the refuge, it's being broken up by a lot of houses and developments, and that's ruining the habitat for wildlife. So with these agriculture fields, we're actually providing the wildlife with more food that they need to survive off of. So also on this refuge, we have pollinator plots. So like I was talking about, we have all these fun, furry, feathered animals on the refuge, but pollinators and insects are just as important as all these other species. So we actually plant pollinator plots which are plots of lands that are full of native grasses, native flowers, allowing native bee species and other insects to come in. So first off, plants are, most of you probably know, plants are very important for humans to survive off of. But there, this pollinator plot is actually very important to other wildlife too. So when we plant these, it brings in the insects, which also brings in birds like pheasants and grouse and quail. They all rely on these plots because they eat insects, and that's an important part of their diet. And then next, the biggest part of our refuge is our wetlands. 
So we have hundreds and hundreds of waterfowl that migrate over the refuge every year. We are actually in a migration corridor for uh, waterfowl and over 50% of our refuge is made up of these wetlands. So we have a very important job in maintaining these wetlands and opening them up for um, all these birds that are coming through the valley. And really sad, but in this valley, it's been developed so much that uh, over 70% of the natural wetlands that used to be there are gone. So we are starting to try to make up for them on our 1,300 acre wildlife refuge. So, so the next thing I want to talk about is the jobs on a wildlife refuge. How many of you guys are considering ever working with wildlife or in the conservation field? Okay, a few of you out there. How many of you care about wildlife or conservation? Okay, all of you out there, which is great. So I want you to know that um, you don't have to be a wildlife biologist to support wildlife and conservation. So on this refuge specifically, it's pretty small. There's only five of us that work there permanently. And I'll kind of give you a little description on everyone. So that little picture there, that's a little aerial picture of looking down at the refuge. You can see the wetlands in there, agriculture fields, also the forests we have on it. But most importantly, our executive director. So he's like the head man, the big boss there at the refuge. It takes a while to work up to that kind of a position. You have to start where I'm at and eventually you can work up into a place like that. But he is the one that makes all of the big decisions on the refuge. So he plans all the projects. Like if we want to open a new wetland, he is the one that will go out on the refuge. He'll monitor. He'll see where a wetland can be opened up. He calls up the right people and makes sure it happens. Um, he is also really important because we talk to landowners. So we want local landowners in the area to start protecting their land like we are protecting ours because we want to make a big migration corridor for people. So he will actually go to people's properties, assess it for them, and then gives them suggestions on how they can protect wildlife on their own properties. So up on that top little picture there, there are a lot of projects we've run on the refuge. That there, you'll see it's a really tall fence, and you're like, why? that doesn't make sense. Like, that's keeping wildlife out. Like, why would you put big fences on your property? Well, that is actually protecting an aspen stand. We have so many deer and elk and moose on the property that if we don't fence off parts of the forest area, areas, they will actually eat it all the way down to the ground because there really isn't much left in the valley for them to eat on anymore. So they rely heavily on what we have on the refuge. So about every 10 years, we rotate these enclosures around different aspen stands. We allow them to grow up as big as they can. And then after 10 years, we move it to a new stand that needs protecting. So it eventually opens up for animals to use again, but it protects it in the short run. So next, here it looks kind of scary. There's a fire on the refuge. This is actually very important. We have to burn down the cattails that happen on the refuge every year. Cattails can actually be an invasive species. And so to open up wetlands for ducks and such, we will burn out the middle of these cattail sections. Then we let it freeze over in the wintertime. We'll bring in backhoes and such, dig it out, get all the cattails out of there. And then the spring, it floods again, and it will open up into a nice wetland. So here's a picture, too, where this wetland isn't too bad, but you can see cattails starting to grow back into it. That one we went in by hand and manually pulled out those cattails to open it up for waterfowl again. And like I said, there's only five of us working at this wildlife refuge. Uh, we rely heavily on volunteers to come in and help us with these kinds of projects. So also, once again, like I was talking about, Sam, our executive director, he's the one that plans these projects. He's not necessarily the one that's out there doing the dirty work, digging out all these uh, all these places, but he's the one planning it for us. So next, though, is our lands manager. So if you want to be more hands-on in the wild wildlife field, this is a job you can get without knowing anything about wildlife. So our lands manager, he is the one that does the dirty work that Sam, our executive director, plans. So when Sam's like, hey, we need to put up fences around these aspen enclosures, he's the one that goes out on the refuge and actually puts up these enclosures, or he's the one out there pulling the cattails or um, fixing anything we need fixed on the refuge. So he doesn't have any experience with wildlife, but he's passionate about conservation, and he is able to help us get these projects done. He also, so you guys can see down there, 
there's some kids pulling weeds on the refuge. So we have to manage weeds on the refuge too, and he will get volunteers to come in and help him walk the refuge and pull all these weeds. And then next, it's kind of hard to see in that picture, there's kind of a little clump of like cattails in the middle there, but up on a stand. We have volunteers make for us uh, wood duck nests and goose nests that we stick out all over the property. And so we have a lot of people that have building skills and construction skills, and they'll come in and help us on the refuge to put up these uh, habitats and these nests that birds need. So like I was saying though, you don't have to be a wildlife biologist to do any of this. How many of you guys are into social media and technology? I'll say, okay, a big group of you. So our next job on the refuge, which you might not think about, but is really important, is our social media manager and events planner. So she has no experience at all with wildlife, but she cares about it. And so she runs our social media for us. So she goes out on the refuge. She's actually the one that most of these pictures you're seeing in here today, she's taken them. And she puts those out to the public to let people know what we're doing and teaches them about it. And her job is, you might not think that important, but one of the more important uh, jobs we have on the refuge, because without her, we can't get the word out to people what we're doing, and we lose money then, and then that means we can't actually protect habitats. So lastly, though, I want to talk about my job. So like I said, I am a wildlife biologist, but I'm also a conservation educator. So I got a degree in wildlife biology, but my job is to teach people about this. So. I spend most of my summers running camps on the refuge, and I run camps for kids. I also run programs for adults. So up on the board, you're going to start seeing pictures. This last summer, I ran some aquatic insect camps where we got to go out in the cre creeks and actually collect wildlife and insects and learn about them hands-on. Um, also really fun, I get to teach people about hobbies that contribute to conservation. So hunting, fishing, so like up there you can see people learning how to fly fish. I get to teach people about these kinds of things. And then the last thing here that's kind of cool, like I said, I'm doing a lot of educating, talking to people, but I do get to work with wildlife. So. I am a certified dove bander on the refuge, and we have to collect doves every summer. We catch them, we put little bands on their legs, and that's how we monitor their populations. I actually got to run a camp where I got to teach people about dove banding, kids about dove banding, and everybody in my camp actually got to hold these real live doves and then release them again back into the wild. And we get to, we ca actually captured a few that I had uh, banded before, so you got to see the bands, figure out how old they are and such from past capturings. So my job is honestly, in my opinion, one of the better jobs, because not only do I get to talk to everyone about this, but I still get to be hands-on in the field doing a lot of wildlife work. So we'll move on here. So, also like I was saying, I get to teach people a lot of other hobbies. Uh, this is a youth waterfowl weekend where I got to have kids out on the refuge learning how to hunt waterfowl for the first time. So they got to do sessions where we would sit in a classroom, you'd get to learn how to ID waterfowl, you get to learn about guns, you get to learn about all the safety, and then you also learn about how it contributes to conservation. And then eventually, we get you out on the refuge where you can actually hunt for wildlife. Also, this is really important on our refuge. If we didn't have hunting, we would be overrun with wildlife because we are one of the safe spots down here in Montana in this valley that we're in. And if we didn't do hunting, uh, there would be so much wildlife that we wouldn't be able to keep up on the habitat and food they need and they would actually destroy it. And then next, this is even an adult fly fishing class that I have got to teach. So I don't only work with kids, I work with adults as well because everybody is the future of conservation and I think it's important that you gotta learn about it, you gotta get passionate about it to save it into the future. So I do have an advice slide for you guys. So if you are wanting to get into wildlife and conservation or even if you aren't interested in being a biologist yourself, there are so many ways that you can get involved with this. So, like I said, you don't have to be a wildlife biologist to work with wildlife. 
Uh, you can be a photographer, you can be a social media expert, you can be an artist and you can paint pictures and send that money back to conservation. There are so many ways to be involved with this kind of stuff. Because like we said before, almost everyone here raised their hand that they care about wildlife and conservation. So we all play a part in protecting that wildlife. So my second bit of advice is make sure you follow your passions and work hard in school. When you find something you love to do, just go hard after that because when you get up into your adult life and your adult career, you want your passion to be your career. You don't want to feel like you have to go to a job every day that you don't love. Like me, I work with wildlife every single day and get to teach people about it. I don't feel like I'm working at all. This is what I love doing and I want to do for the rest of my life. And then my last one to you guys is just remember to have fun and enjoy the outdoors. It's there for you. It's in your back. You don't have to live out in the country to be in the outdoors and enjoy wildlife. Just in your backyard yourself, you can enjoy all these things and these passions you have. And my last little piece of advice is we can all be wildlife warriors. So all you have to do is be passionate about what you're doing and whatever you love doing, you can contribute to conservation. So with that, any of you guys that like social media, you will see on the bottom of this slide, you can get on our website, you can follow us on Instagram, or even Facebook, and you can see the projects we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So I want to open it up for questions. Do you guys have any questions about a wildlife refuge and what it takes? Yeah. It's, it's kind of much of a question, but more of a comment. Perfect. Me, me and my friends, we both absolutely love reptiles. Well, I agree. Reptiles are pretty cool. Yeah. Some people don't agree with me, but they are. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. All right, I saw your hand over there first. So we are on the far western side of the state, so almost in Idaho. We are located next to, it's called the Bitterroot Mountains, so it's a really big mountain chain, chain in the Rocky Mountains. I saw your hands there. Do I speak at stuff like this very often? So I'll be honest, uh, I started this job in June, so I am still very new at it, but all the jobs I've had in the past have been kind of doing this, interacting with people and talking to them. I actually used to be scared of public speaking, but I've done it so much now that I am used to it. So yeah, I see your hand back there. The biggest snake I've ever held. Well, there was a python at our old zoo that you had to have 10 people to hold him up. I can't remember what he weighed, but not one person could hold him. He was so big. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions, though, about the refuge? Or any, you can ask me even about my, any of my old career stuff, too. If not, though? Yeah, do you have one? What was my favorite job before? I will say I loved being a zookeeper, because I love working with wildlife. It is one of the harder jobs I have ever worked, though. You don't get a lot of time off, um, and because an they're animals. They're stuck in the zoo, and you have to be there every day to take care of them. But it's one of the most rewarding experiences, because you get to see these animals grow. You also, also get to see a lot of people that come to the zoo learn to love the animals that you love, too, and want to care for them. So yeah. Yeah, do you have one? Favorite animal at the zoo? Probably the river otters. They were they were cute. They were very fun. A lot smarter than you think too. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? All right.